can see those pumps. I hope so. Yep, yep. Natalie's got her lippy on. It's a serious video. Hi everyone, it's me, Natalie, and welcome to a sit down video, not a vlog. <laughs> this is an exciting video for me to make because I'm finally going to get involved in Aussie April. I've been watching it from the sidelines, wishing I could have been there from the start, but things in my life didn't work out that way. If you haven't seen my vlogs, we recently moved house and um, that takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. So I'm back and I thought better late than never, right? I am so excited that Jacqueline and Doris are doing this. Spreading the love of um, Aussie books is just, um, just makes me really, really happy. So hopefully you're already well on your way in Aussie April. Um, you've done some prompts and found some great new authors to love. Um, but I'm just getting started on the 17th of the month. Oh, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> right, so this is my Aussie section with all of my Aussie authors in it. And I thought I'll just, I haven't even thought about this. I've got the prompts here and we're going to start um, picking books off for the prompts and get stuck into reading them. Okay, let's start with the prompts and go from there. Prompt number one is a new Aussie release that I've seen reviewed on Booktube. Now, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's have a look. Um, oh, here we go. Isn't that a gorgeous cover? This is a, this was released last year. And, oh, we'll check this out. It's signed. I saw Laura Elizabeth Woollett at the Brisbane Writers Festival. She's just amazing. And um, I bought the book then, got it signed, and have not read it. This is as new as it's going to get for me, but I'm just so excited to read this book. This is about the Jonestown incident, isn't it? Yeah, the People's Temple. It follows a woman who gets pulled into that cult. Yeah, I'm, it's all coming back to me now. So this is my pick for uh, prompt number one. Cool. So prompt number two is an Aussie author that I've been meaning to get to. Oh God, here we go. Oh, oh. Chloe Hooper, The Arsonist. I do want to read this. This was long listed for the Stella Prize and I bought it thinking for sure it was going to get shortlisted, but it didn't. There's also Richard Flanagan. There's also Patrick White. I've never read any Patrick White. He's not technically Australian, but I think we claim him. He was born in England. Oh. Oh. So I'm just pulling Peter Carey out. He's an Australian author. He now lives in New York. But I did pick this up from the library. Hang on. And I want to get to this. This is um, shortlisted for the Walter Scott Prize for fiction. So I could do Peter Carey for this prompt. Okay, let's try and pull this all together because I just picked off five books for prompt two. Now this book is a non-fiction account. Um, it's about these really horrible uh, bushfires that happened in Victoria in 2002, 2009, and about the man who started them and Chloe Hooper, um, yeah, sort of has shown two sides of the story to that horrible, horrible, horrible day. So really, really, really want to do that. I might take Patrick White off because he's not exactly, he lives here. He lives here. Just, just for the, just to narrow things down. Here, here you go, okay. This is Richard Flanagan. Um, he's, yeah, he's a really great, well, I've never read any of his books. It's a really well-known Australian author. 
but this book sounds amazing. This is set in 1839 and it's about a explorer who adopts a young indigenous girl from Tasmania and then takes her back to England and wants to perform an experiment to prove that a savage can be civilized. It sounds really full on and really horrible and um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how he writes that. So that's, that's I wanna read that. And then there's these two Peter Carey books. So yeah, like I said, this is shortlisted for the Walter Scott Prize for Fiction. What's it about? This is about a car race? What? Wow, okay, no, it's not about a car race. <laughs> It's set in the 1950s. Yeah, so these people are on this big outback car race, but their navigator takes them out from the lily white Australia they know so well and out into the bush where they see the consequences of what the Europeans did to such an amazing indigenous culture. Wow, this sounds amazing. Right, I gotta, I gotta read that one. And then his, his other book, My Life is a Fake. Yeah, so this is set in Melbourne in the 1940s and it maybe, you know, it's, it's about a great hoax where a man invents a poet that he says has died and then the um, magazine that he submits the story to falls for the hoax and then there's a trial and all sorts of things. And then because everybody finds out he's a fake, he has to take off to Kuala Lumpur. So, yeah. I think out of these two Peter Carries, this one will win for sure. Let's pop that one back. It's got me down to three. <laughs> I, ca I can't cut it down any further than that. Maybe one of these will apply to another prompt. Let's, let's have a look. Okay, prompt number three is a book by an Indigenous author. So no, we're not, we're not having any luck with those. I've got some Indigenous authors here. I have Carpenteria by Alexis Wright. Um, this has been well celebrated and Alexis Wright has actually won the Stella Prize as well with her other book tracker. So I've wanted to read this book for a really long time. Her mob is up in the Gulf of Carpenteria, which is a place that, um, yeah, I don't know much about, but have been to. So yeah, it's just a story of life in Indigenous Australia um, and, and how they have to fight for their land. So there's that. There's also Home. Um, yeah, it's about a woman who lives in the city and then goes um, back to her ancestral country and, and what that... Oh, that could be really cool actually. Yeah, discovers all of her family heritage for the first time. Okay, I think what I'll do is I might do put these two on the list. See, all of a sudden I've decided you can have more than one book per prompt, even though I've got 10 days to read them. We'll, we'll work it out at the end. So the last prompt is a Stella Prize listed book from any year, and I've been reading through the Stella Prize shortlist, but I don't want to count any of them because... I need to read something new and I'm only just starting Aussie April, right? So I need to find, and I know that there are three books in here that have been shortlisted in other years or something. So let me, right, here's one. This is actually the winner in when? 2013, Mateship with Birds um, by Carrie Tiffany. So yeah, this is about a, a lonely farmer who watches his birds um, and his next door neighbors. <laughs> yes, honey, what do you need? Think of me in your peaceful reading rooms with no distractions. Think of me. <laughs> so this is, yeah, about Harry watching his birds and his next door neighbor who are watching him as well with binoculars. Um, then one of the boys from next door decides to start spending time with Harry. And um, it says when Harry decides to teach Michael about the opposite sex, perilous boundaries are crossed. So birds might have two meanings here, right? 
Um, yeah, so really excited to read this one. I also have... I also have The Strays. What was this? 2015 winner by Emily Bito. Um, what's this about? We're in school with Lily. She befriends one of the daughters of an infamous painter. These painters are trying to live a bohemian life and get out of the conservatism of 1930s Australia. Of course you would. And then Lily loves that idea and longs to be part of that family. And then it's a look, oh, wow, it's a look at how these, this painter's decision to live his life the way he does, and him and his wife, I guess, how the people that pay the price for that are his daughters and not him. And so then Lily is 30 years older and she looks back. She contemplates the ordinary path her own life took, how she played it safe, but does freedom come at a cost? Hmm, this is very cool and something that, uh, yeah, I would be very excited to read about. Oh, cool. Um, and there's one more. I'm sure there is. I'm sure it was. There's none there. Yeah. 2016 shortlist. Hope Farm. Um, I bought this book because it had farm on the cover and nature. <laughs> I don't know what it's about. Okay, we're in 1985. Um, oh, we're moving to a rural hippie commune. Oh dear. It's from Silver's point of view. Her mum's moving her there with her new boyfriend. Uh, and it's about how in the commune at 13 she's thrust into the adult world. She can't be a kid anymore. Deadly consequences. Wow. Sounds very cool. So yay, there's three st things for prompt number four. Oh my goodness. So let's think about this. We've got 14 days left and I've picked up <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books in 14 days. I can hardly read nine books in a month. Okay, if I was to give up any of these, Oh God, I can't do it. I can't do it. And then I've got all of these. If I was to give up any of these. Oh, no, I can't do it. Uh, nope. And then, no. Okay, I think realistically, this isn't going to work because it's so big. <laughs> but it's 500 pages. But what I might do is, yeah, this might just be my TBR and I will continue Aussie April <laughs> into, oh, there's some more. I will continue Aussie April into May if I have to. But what a fantastic stack of books. This is nuts. I'm never gonna read all of these in time, but I will read all of them. Oh, I'm so excited to tackle this. Why didn't I start at the 1st of April? Anyway, my books are in boxes, that's why. If you've read any of these, let me know if you loved them. Let me know if there's something that you feel really passionately that I should start with. <laughs> um, yeah, and let me know if you're interested in reading any of these together. I always love chatting. Um, and I will keep you updated with how I'm going. I'm going to try and punch out as many as I can before the end of the month. But we will see. Thank you for watching. I hope you're enjoying your Aussie April. Thank you to Jacqueline and Doris for creating it. It's such a fantastic idea. And um, yeah, I'll keep you posted on how I go. Talk to you next time.